Welcome back, Geometers. Mr. Klinkerman again. And once again, we're going to be talking about angle pair relationships. We have already, in section 1.5, discussed how to recognize and use complementary and supplementary angles. In the latest video, I taught you how to be able to identify linear pairs and vertical pairs which are really just known as vertical angles normally. And in this video, I want you to learn how to use linear pair and vertical pair relationships. Okay, now I'm going to show you a picture here. And I want to explain the basic concept. In the previous section, we learned about different types of angles. We know what a right angle is, we know what a straight angle is, and so forth. But ultimately, in geometry, if we're going to be able to find missing angle measurements, which is a pretty important thing to do, we've got to know how the measures of angles are related to one another. And so we're learning special relationships such as those that a linear pair or a vertical pair of angles have in order to be able to find missing angle measures in other types of figures. And you'll see that throughout this um, presentation. Now, in this picture that you're looking at right now, you ought to recognize the angle PQB and angle BQR are a linear pair. All right, And if you remember, the way that you determine that two angles are a linear pair is first of all you determine that they're adjacent to one another and these angles do have a common vertex and a common side and they also don't share any common interior points, they don't overlap one another. And their sides that are not common form opposite rays. That ray QR and ray QP are opposite rays of one another. Now what I'm interested in today is what is the relationship between the measures of angles PQB and BQR since they are a linear pair. And we've actually used a picture like this before in class. Because angle PQB and angle BQR have two sides that form opposite rays, All right, again this side and this side are opposite rays, what that means is that their opposite sides form a, a straight angle and so there's 180 degrees split between those two angles. All right? The measure of angle PQB plus the measure angle BQR is going to equal 180 degrees. And that's true for every linear pair of angles every time that their measures add up to 180 degrees. Or another way of saying it, here's another word we've learned recently, linear pairs of angles are always supplementary. Their measures always add up to 180 degrees. All right, now we need to use that fact and so we're going to do that. I've given you the same picture right here, and I've given you angle measures this time for those two angles PQB and BQR. All right, you see that the measure angle PQB is 7x plus 37 degrees, and the measure of angle BQR is 5x plus 11 degrees. And I want us to find out what the actual angle measures are, not just those algebraic expressions for the angle measures. Well. Because we know that linear pairs of angles are supplementary, we can make an equation that says if you add their angle measures, it adds up to 180 degrees. All right. Remember the measure angle PQB plus the measure angle BQR equals 180 degrees. All right, now let's do some substitution. That means that 7x plus 37 degrees plus 5x plus 11 degrees equals 180. And then we can go and combine our like terms. We we're going to have 12x plus 48 equals 180. Subtract 48. 12x equals 132. That means that x is equal to 11. Now, x is not our answer. It's not what we were told to find. 
but it is necessary to find a value of x in order to find the measures of angles PQB and BQR. You better be getting used to this at this point. What we're going to do to find those actual angle measures, of course, is now substitute the value of x that we found into their expressions for each angle. So measure angle PQB is going to be 7 times 11 plus 37. 77 plus 37 is 114, so 114 degrees is that angle measure. And yes, you could just subtract from 180 now to find the measure of angle BQR. That is presuming, of course, that you did your algebra correctly. What I would prefer for you to do here is to go ahead and substitute 11 into the 5x plus 11. Because if you do that, and the answers that you get add up to 180, it means your algebra was correct. So 5 times 11 plus 11, that's 55 plus 11, or 66. And indeed, 114 plus 66 equals 180. So we know we did our work correct. Great. Good job. So that's the relationship between linear pairs of angles, and that's how you use them. You just always say they're supplementary to one another. And what's going to happen right now is we're going to use linear pairs once again, but we're going to use them to help us determine the relationship between vertical angles. You see in this picture that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. And the reason that they're vertical angles is because their sides, both pairs of sides, form opposite rays. This side of angle 2 and this side of angle 1 are opposite rays. And the other side of angle 1 and the other side of angle 2 are opposite rays. All right, now at the same time, angle 1 and the 98 degree angle form a linear pair, and angle 2 and the 98 degree angle form a linear pair. Now I'd like you to do some of the work for me here. Here's what I'm looking for. I would like you to find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. And you're going to use the fact that each is a linear pair with a 98 degree angle in order to do that. And once you find the measure of angle 1 and measure of angle 2, what I'm wanting you to do is tell me what the relationship is between the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. All right, are they complementary? Are they supplementary? Is there some other relationship between vertical angles that we need to be aware of? Go ahead and pause the video, find the measures of angles 1 and 2, and then answer that question about their relationship. Okay, look at the equations that I formed. I determined the measure angle 1 plus 98 degrees equals 180 degrees because angle 1 and the 98 degree angle were a linear pair, so they had to be supplementary. And that told me that the measure angle 1 was equal to 82 degrees. Then I wrote that the measure angle 2 plus 98 degrees equals 180 because 98 degrees and angle 2 were linear pairs, so they had to be supplementary. And that told me that the measure angle 2 is equal to 82 degrees. All right? And I hope this next thing is a pretty clear question to answer. We just said what the measure angle 1 and the measure angle 2 are, and I want to know what is the relationship between them. And the relationship between the, that pair of vertical angles was that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. So we had angle 1 and angle 2, which were vertical angles, and their angle measures were equal. Well, the next thing I want to know then is this. Is that relationship true for all vertical pairs of angles? Can you always say that if two angles are vertical angles, that their measures are equal? And in fact, the answer is yes. And this is a relationship that you have to know. This is super important that you get this down. Vertical angles are congruent. Anytime you have two angles that are vertical angles, they're always going to be congruent in measure, which is super useful. You're going to use this all the time in geometry. All right, for the remainder of the video, what we're going to be doing is working examples that involve linear pairs and or vertical angle relationships. 
You see a new drawing here. We're going to find the values of x and y, and you see three expressions to do that with. And when you look at those three expressions, all right, those three angle measures, you've got a pair of vertical angles. The 6x degree angle and the 2y plus 22 degree angle, those are vertical angles. And we know that 6y, then, or sorry, that 6x has to be equal to 2y plus 22 because they're vertical angles. However, that's not going to do us a lot of good yet because one of those angle measures had an x and the other one had a y. So even though that's a true statement, we're going to have to hold off on actually using that equation. And in fact, whenever you have pictures like this where you have angles that have different variables as part of their measures, you want to try to pick the angles that have the same variable first to work with. And so let's look at this angle that's 7y plus 41 degrees and the one that's 2y plus 22 degrees. They both have y. That's going to be helpful to us. And let's determine their relationship. And of course their relationship is that they form a linear pair and that they're supplementary to one another. All right, go ahead and pause the video and figure out what is the value of y using the fact that those two angles are a linear pair. There you go. You can see how I added those two angle measures up to 180 because they were supplementary to one another. Ended up finding out that y is 13. Now that we know the value of y, we're going to be able to find the value of x. Now the problem didn't ask you to find the angle measures in the picture. However, it turns out to be a very smart thing to find the angle measures when you're done. I'm going to plug 13 into each of those angle measures that we just found uh, real quickly. All right, 7 times 13, that's 91. 91 plus 41 is 132 degrees. 2 times 13 is 26. 26 plus 22 is 48. Now, part of the reason I'm doing that is because I can see that 132 plus 48 is 180, and so I know I got the value of y correct. But the other reason I'm doing that is so that I can help find the value of x. Because now that we know the actual angle measures, for those two angles, I'm going to be able to use this relationship between 6x degrees and 2y plus 22 degrees. The fact that they're equal makes a difference. In finding the value of x, because now I know the value of y. I can go ahead and continue that equation we made earlier, using the fact that vertical angles are equal, and say that 6x is equal to 48. And so, of course, that means that x is equal to... To 8. Okay, now that's a real easy mental math to check. 6 times 8 is 48. That's congruent to the angle across from it. It's supplementary to the angle that's a linear pair. And so there you go. Good work. Try that with this picture. Pause the video. Work on your own. See how you do. Checking your work, you see the first thing that I did was I worked with those two angle measures that both had an X. I told you in the previous problem, try to select two angle measures that use the same variable. You had two choices here, but I went with the 5x plus 13 and the 6x minus 7. They were vertical angles, so I set them equal to one another. Ended up finding out that x was 20. Now you might think that these two angles right here and right here don't look, well, I meant to say right here, they don't look like they're 20 degrees, and they're not. Remember that you've got to plug the value of x back in to the equation in order to figure out what the angle measures are. You're going to get 113 degrees for each of them. Now, one note, we've already talked about in class most likely the angles in the pictures don't have to actually look like they're angle measures. Pictures aren't always drawn to scale. Nevertheless, I wanted to emphasize that you had to plug in that value of x to find those angle measures. Okay. Now, I actually had a few different relationships I could have used to find the value of y. I chose to set the two vertical angles that both had y as their part of their measures, chose to set those equal because they are vertical angles, and I can do that. And I figured out that y is equal to 11. But I just as easily could have used any linear pair relationships and said, for instance, that 8y minus 21 plus 113 is equal to 180. 
and that also would have helped me to find that missing angle measure. All right, now that we know that y is equal to 11, we can figure out that each of these angles is 67 degrees. 88 minus 21 is 67 degrees. 22 plus 45 is 67 degrees. Now we didn't have to do that, but you can see that both pairs of vertical angles are equal, and you can see that all the linear pairs add up to 180, because 67 plus 14, 113 is 180. So we must have done our work correctly since we've got all the correct relationships that geometry would tell us that we need. One more picture for you to work on. A little bit of a, a challenge question right here. Or at least it looks like it because I've got triangles in the picture. I want you to see what you can do to find the values of x, y, and z in this picture. Go ahead and try it. Now the challenging part was this. We couldn't find x, y, or z by comparing those angles to each other, at least not to begin. Because we didn't know any of those measures, so we couldn't use the vertical angles that you see, and we couldn't use the linear pairs that you see either. What I was curious to find out about is if you guys know the relationship between the three angles within a triangle, though. If you look at these three angles, angle A, angle B, and angle BEA, the three angles of the triangle, you ought to know that there's 180 degrees in a triangle, and so that if I add those three angle measures up, as I did over here, I can set them equal to 180 degrees. And in so doing, I was able to figure out that the value of x is 25. And now that I know that the value of x is 25, that opens up the door for me to be able to figure out the other angle measures here. Looking at y. Now that we know that x is 25, we can use the fact that those are linear pairs and that the linear pairs have to be supplementary to find the value of y. x plus y has to equal 180. So 25 plus y equals 180. And then y is 155. Then, finally, we can use the relationship between angle x and y or between angle y and z to be able to find out this measure. I'm going to go with the vertical angle relationship though because that's a super simple one. If two angles are vertical angles such as x and z are, you know that they're equal so then we can say that z is equal to 25. Well done. You should now understand how to use linear pairs of vertical angles and we'll put that into practice many, 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 many times over the course of the year. Did I mention we're going to use that many times? It's going to happen. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.